the Shark Deck. I am Johnny Mac with your daily comedy news. Did you catch the end of Sunday's episode? Uh, got a little awkward. I could have taken it out, but like I said yesterday, that's no fun. All right. It's always sunny in Philadelphia is back for season 16. June 7th, it'll be out. And we are told this year alone, Mac battles with allergies and long distance dating. Charlie takes on his long forgotten sisters. D fights for rent control and women's athletics. Frank wrestles for his gun and and Dennis struggles to improve his mental health. Uprox had recently spoke to Glenn Howerton, who plays Dennis. Glenn says the show doesn't push the envelope just for the sake of it. The way the show's talk about it, it's as if that's our goal or that our goal is to push the boundaries of what's decent or whatever. And that's never the goal. That being said, what the goal is, is to make people laugh. And often in order to do so, you kind of have to shake them up a little bit. The best jokes to me are slightly acerbic and make you go, oh, can you say that? That's just what I like because I like to be provoked. I like to be poked at by art. For me, it's more about raising questions, forcing people on any side of a particular issue to sort of face what is often absurd about their point of view or the reasons behind their point of view. Poking fun at the extremes on any side of any given issue or argument, I mean, that's just what the show's always been about. Rob McElhenney, who's like Hollywood's darling now, especially since the soccer team got promoted, admitted the show may have gone a little too far by putting his character Mac in blackface in the tradition of Tropic Thunder. He did that as part of a Lethal Weapon parody. Netflix removed that episode back in 2021. That was over 10 years after the original air date. At the time, McElhenney addressed the controversy, saying, I find that my barometer is off for what's appropriate sometimes in situations because, like, we've spent 15 years making a show about the worst people on the planet and because it's satire, we lean so heavily into the idea and then we're always, like, right on the razor's edge. That's the only way satire works. And then I go and do something else and I'm pitching something and I realize... Oh, it's wholly inappropriate for the show what I'm doing because these are supposed to be real human beings, whereas on Sunny, they're cartoon characters and we can kind of get away with a whole lot more. Mac addressed it on the show in the episode The Gang Makes Lethal Weapon 7. In that episode, Mac apologizes for wearing blackface in Lethal Weapon 5, and the others remind him that he wore blackface in Lethal Weapon 6 as well. A detail that slipped by the Netflix censors, this article says. Howerton said back in 2015, by the time we got to season three, I remember having a specific conversation with the guys where our attitude was like, any minute the show's going to get canceled. So F it. Let's see how far we can go with these characters. Let's see how far we can push them. Pete Davidson doing more Taco Bell ads. We're going to see a lot of Pete Davidson articles this week in the new campaign called Breakfast with Peter. Pete Davidson is being referred to Peter rather than Pete. Peter is a morning talk show host. The character says, good morning, I'm Peter Davidson, not Pete, because before 11 a.m. I like to keep it toned down and simple, just like Taco Bell breakfast. Meanwhile, on Gossip Corner, Pete Davidson and girlfriend Chase Sweet wonders they were at the Bupkis premiere and chose not to appear together. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Page six says Pete was wearing an oversized hoodie and chocolate brown Uggs. He completed his look with a denim duster. The Chicago Sun-Times had a great review of Bobcat Goldthwait's show uh, in Chicago last Wednesday. I mentioned this on Friday's episode. Becky, the listener, was there. Hello, Becky. Thank you for your note. The Sun-Times writes, on a chilly Wednesday night in late April. Yeah, I was in town on Tuesday. My original plan was to hit the Cubs game. And then I saw the forecast was in the 40s. And I'm like, no Cubs game. And I changed my flight and I came home Tuesday night. Less than 100 comedy fans politely moved from the bar at the Lincoln Lodge in Bucktown into the theater. They talked about how Bobcat no longer really does the thing and said a more measured and demure Goldthwait stepped to the mic at the Lincoln Lodge, celebrating the release of his comedy album Soldier for Christ. By the way, I played that on the weekly comedy thing. That's the show I host on the Live One app. You can get the app and listen to the weekly comedy thing for free on the Live One app. Goldthwait was sporting dark rimmed glasses, a Havana style fedora, a cozy flannel shirt and a T-shirt emblazoned with a penguin. His opening line, you don't look the same either. Love that joke. That was his previous album's title, too. The evening's lineup was stacked. Eugene Merman, whose credits include something called Bob's Burgers. Now, let me ask you two questions. One, have you ever actually seen Bob's Burgers? I know you've heard of it. I get it. I know you've seen the merch. I know you've seen the promos. I know you heard Joe Buck talk about it for years during Fox football games. But have you ever actually seen Bob's Burgers? No. More importantly, second question, have you ever met anyone who has seen Bob's Burgers? That answer is also no, and that's very curious. I digress. Also on the bill, Victoria Vincent, credits just for laughs. Adam Burke, credits, wait, wait, don't tell me. And Jay McBride, credits inside Amy Schumer. I'll also encourage you to watch Jay McBride's special on YouTube, which is fantastic. Surprises included Tim Kazarinski, credits Police Academy 2 through 4 and Saturday Night Live 40 years ago somehow. 
And voice actor Tom Kenny, SpongeBob SquarePants, Rick and Morty. Goldthwait's performance, which was made of jokes that didn't make the album, skewed towards the ravages of aging. His doctor chastised him for smoking cigars. And when he points out that Groucho Marx and George Burns lived very long lives, his doctor returned with, well, they were famous comedians. That's a great joke. The MRI technician knew Goldthwait and did an impression as the procedure started. While receiving shoulder replacement surgery, Goldthwait was asked if he preferred a cadaver shoulder or an artificial one. He chose an artificial one, of course, because he didn't want to have to ask, where was my shoulder on January 6th? Sounds like the sporting acts were good, too. Victoria Vincent laughed at her younger days spent writing fan fiction about the band Good Charlotte. Adam Burke joked about kidney stones as like a healing crystal, but the opposite. I get those. Yeah, man, you don't want that. You really don't want that. Tim Kazarinsky embraced his dad humor vibes by reading a bad Russian translation off a box of instant rice and telling two jokes one might find in a dirty joke book. How old is Tim Kazarinsky now? 73. Jay McBride, a trans woman, in case you're not familiar with Jay, but it's relevant to the joke, joked about her breast being as the best 10,000 pesos I've ever spent. The Sun Times said the pinnacle of the show occurred when Kenny joined Goldthwait on stage for the final act. They've been friends since elementary school and started out in comedy together. Kenny is the one who originated the Bobcat nickname. They did two songs together and Goldthwait admitted to being more nervous singing about a duck than he was descending naked at a Nirvana show. Hello, I am Mark Francis, host of Palace Intrigue, the podcast that delves into the daily drama of the British royal family. These short daily episodes cover the latest news and scandals involving the likes of Prince Harry, Meghan Markle, Kate Middleton, King Charles and the rest. From backroom sources to public controversies, we've got you covered. Whether you're a longtime fan or just curious about the royals, Palace Intrigue is the perfect podcast for you. So join us as we explore the lives, legacies, and dramas of the British monarchy. Subscribe now and never miss an episode of Palace Intrigue. Today's Daily Comedy News is brought to you by the power of the streak. I've told you about this on and off. This is Kara Wood's book about how you should stay consistent with exercise and keep motivated over time. I need to read this thing again. Oh, my goodness. I don't think I've worked out now in 10 days. Now, I had some travel, and when I travel, then when I'm not traveling, I have to do extra work to make up for the travel time. I had some soccer. It was cold. Um, my knee hurt. I did play volleyball once and other excuses. But, boy, Carowood's going to be sending me an email and be like, come on, man, what are you doing? All right. Well, if you struggle with working out regularly, if you started exercising, or if you started exercising only to get back to where you'd Start doing nothing again. You know those people sitting in a basement drinking iced coffees, making up excuses why they don't go for runs. Yeah, Kara had zero motivation for years, but she eventually flipped the switch and has not looked back. She's got a 12-year running streak. I go three days, and I'm like, ooh, awesome, 12 years. Her story is funny, relatable, and inspiring. Plus, she'll give you a step-by-step guide of how you can do the same thing with any exercise. Doesn't have to be running. All right, so you want to check out The Power of the Streak. It's available in all formats, Amazon, Barnes & Noble. A percentage of the royalties goes to the Special Olympics. There's an audiobook version on iTunes and Audible. Socials, Insta, at the Power of the Streak. Twitter, at Power of Streak. But here's what you can do to help me, because she's going to yell at me, because I've been so lazy, right? Why don't you jump on her free blog slash newsletter on Substack, okay? It's called Knock It Off. Do you have Google? Just do this. Type into Google, Knock It Off Substack, and the link will come up. I just did it. Here's the April 23rd article. It's called, What Are Your Goals? But... Because I'm 12 years old at heart, the April 9th article is called Just Blow on Her Face. You're curious, right? You're curious. You have the giggles. I see you out there, Mike in Cleveland, driving your car, giggling right now. I see you. I don't think that's what it's about, Mike. Knock It Off is about life, motherhood, and all things in between, Mike. Cut it out. Knock it off. Go to knockitoff.substack.com. Carawood, thank you for supporting today's Daily Comedy News. I am planning on going for a run today. Now, tomorrow I got to take my mom to the doctor. So I already have an excuse for tomorrow, so I should run today. The Daily Cardinal caught up with Drew Lynch. You know him from America's Got Talent. And the Daily Cardinal said, those who know you from America's Got Talent likely know of your stutter. What's happened with the stutter since 2015? How do you feel about the fact that it's improved? How would you say it affects your comedy now? That's a very good question. Drew said, as some may know from AGT, I had a softball injury. It was a grounder to the throat. And then I fell and hit my head on the ground. I had concussion. The concussion was something that I went to sleep on. The next day I woke up and I had to be rushed to the hospital because my motor skills and speech were off. That was 12 years ago. It's been a long journey of not only trying to remedy it, but also living my life with it. 
There are some days where there are certain triggers or things you get stuck on. I've been to speech therapy, seen a neurologist, chiropractors, and physical therapists, and rehabilitation. I think ultimately it's been something that I've learned to not make such a big deal about. And ironically, it's become less and less a thing because of my own lightening up. I always used to think everything was an attack or people thought less of me because of the stutter. Fortunately, my career makes me able to be very self-deprecating by being aware of it. But for the most part, I'm glad I don't use it as a crutch. I don't want it to be something I need to have to do comedy. I always want it to be about the things I'm saying, not the way I'm saying them. Tuesday is another quiet day at the Sydney Comedy Festival. Basically the same lineup as yesterday. We can go to the Sydney Comedy Festival's Happy Hour or the Festival Showcase or let's just hang out at Bondi Beach again. From The Guardian, Diane Forrest, she's 88 and says she's the world's oldest female stand-up comedian. Diane was 68 when she first stepped on stage as a stand-up in 2003. She says, I've never set foot in a comedy club before. I've always been a performer, a singer, actor, musician, but that all came to an end after 9-11. I live in New York and we watched the Twin Towers fall from my apartment building. For a year afterwards, nobody wanted to go out or be entertained. It was then that I started to think about comedy. I realized people need to laugh. And I thought with a little training, I could do it. I took a few classes, tried to work out a routine, got the courage, went up on stage. The first time was terrifying. I had no idea what the audience would make of me. All right, fast forward to today. My first line is, hello, everybody. I'm 88 and three quarters years old. I'm telling you that in case I don't make it all the way through the show. (laughs) And then people laugh. Diane says she makes some jokes people would consider risque. She jokes about not having the energy for 69, so am I, and adds, people are surprised to hear an older person talk about sex. Yes. She says, I'm more of a Puritan in real life, but I have an onstage persona. After a show, people young and old come up to me saying what an inspiration I am. One thing that surprised me is the number of young men who hit on me after a show. I might make a joke about being a cougar, and they'll hang out outside afterwards waiting to talk to me. Guys, you are such horn dogs. They often ask me out, and it's not my brain they're after. All right, you go, Diane. That's your comedy news for today. Follow the show for free on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, wherever you get your shows. See you tomorrow. Can I interest you in some meatballs made out of mammoth meat? No? All right, hi, I'm Johnny Mack, host of Five Good News Stories. It's a twice a week podcast where I share some upbeat stories like the dog who only will respond to commands if you use an Irish brogue. Or what about the guy who's filling potholes with noodles? Or the woman who, congratulations, she passed her driver's license. Oh, by the way, it was her 960th try. You you heard me correctly. It's five good news stories. Nice, easy way to start your morning. Five good news stories. The number five good news stories wherever you get your podcasts.